Previously on the booth at the end. If I disappear for three weeks and come back, I'll accept her, right? You will have to commit slaughter. 22 dead. Who the hell wants God to tell them things they don't want to hear? You'll have to find someone to help. I don't get involved. What does it want me to do? You must make something worth living for. Well, that's what you wanted, isn't it? To be loved. I was just thinking of, you know, a man when I, when I said I wanted love. It's the moment where you go from startled to pain. That's the mark. This lady is missing. Her husband was on TV last night talking about it. No one knows where she is. We went to her home. Her address was on the internet. I wanted to make sure she was still missing. We rang the front doorbell. And the dad answered. And, and he just stood there like he couldn't see us. We told him how sorry we were about his wife and we wanted to help him. But he just left the door open. So we followed him in. They have a little girl. She's kind of a mess. She's retarded. Hey. What? Just leave her alone. She's a freak. It's not that big of a deal. I make flyers. If, if people see these and it helps bring the lady back home, that counts, right? I don't see why not. I'm gonna make this as public a place as possible. The street, I need to make it public. There's a lot of, lots of people to kill. Hmm? 22. 22 people, plus witnesses. I'm gonna need witnesses. Yeah. So, when do you think you'll be ready? This is, uh, it's gonna work, right? It'll work. I hope it hurts. It could. Can I be a little more specific in that? You want to start again? New one? New task? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm already started, so if, if they're gone, they're gone. All right, then. If I die, if I die, before you kill the 22? No, no, no. Uh, after. I mean, from shooting up the street, if I'm walking down the street shooting, it's some. Of course. I mean, there's a chance. Yeah, of course, of course. Someone. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. But if you killed or mortally wounded the 22 people, when the 22nd dies, what you want will come to pass. I really have to plan this out then. Plan it right. You know, move quick. Fire fast. You seem quite taken with this, Jerry. If you could save your nation, if you could save the world, I mean, cleanse the world of these people. You've, uh, you've given me a gift. I was dead. I was there. In my skin. The memory of being in that box. Around the box, cold dirt. I think that's imagination. Dying, decaying becoming part of the soil, forming, crawling up. What, Melanie? Sunlight. What could you make? Flowers. A bed of life rising up to the light. Yeah. That sounds like something. So I went to a funeral. 
open casket at a funeral home, the viewing. And I see a boy, a teenage boy, the son of a woman who had died. She looked so peaceful in the casket, all the worries of the world gone. But her son was a mess, a wild mess, an angry young man. He stood up at one side of the casket, and people could go up and see the body. But he was always there, his hands clenched, his body stiff, staring at her. Sounds like a challenge. I know, but like you said, I couldn't grab someone who was already crying, so you can always pay respects to the dead. And as I did so, I was facing the sun. His eyes burned right into me, like he knew I was up to something. And he said, you don't know her. You never knew her. And I decided in his sorrow he could see something. And I said, no, I don't know her. But when I saw a funeral taking place, I decided to come inside. My father just died. And my sister is killing herself. And my mother's in grief. And he just stood there, just staring at me. And he began to cry. I don't know why he couldn't cry with the others, but he could with me. And he cried into my shoulder for a long time. So that's one. Have you started? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. And which of your clients are you helping? Cheryl. Which one is Cheryl? She has a damaged child. Just leave her family for three weeks' time. Doesn't seem that hard compared to the others. That's what she thought. Is it bad for her? It's only been a couple of days. And? She's miserable. You've seen her? Yeah. She's living in an abandoned building. Upstairs from a schizophrenic woman that guards the place like a gargoyle. And what are you doing? I brought food. Really? What does she talk about? Does she talk <laughs> when you visit? Talk. Well, she, she carries on. She's the one who's frantic, worrying about them, worrying about her. Did you say anything? Well, I did talk, trying to get her to listen. And did your words help? Who knows what words can do? We found a lady, a sad, homeless lady, living in the doorway of some empty building. Did you know? She was just sitting there, staring at nothing. We were passing by, Bobby and me, putting up flyers. I wanted to talk to her, but she didn't talk back. She just kept staring at the ground. Bobby said she was crazy. Was she? I just kept thinking, was she somebody's mother or what, you know? I suppose. I miss my dad. Why? He's my dad. What was your father like? We're not here to talk about me. Did he love you? Yes. In his way. That's nice. I'm gonna go visit the lady again. The one in the doorway? Yeah. Why? She seems lonely is all. Bobby gonna go with you? I don't think so. 
Thanks for the soda. Here's this guy who's been helping me with my garden. He works at the place I went to buy the seeds. He knows a lot of things. He reads a lot. He's sad, though. Knowledge only goes so far. He's sweet. Do you still want what you want? Yes. I can't stop thinking about her. That girl. What about you? Why are you here? I don't know. You won't tell me. I have a sense of it. How it will happen. A massacre? No, no, no. After that, how... These people will go away. Their faith. Yeah, I'm interested in hearing about that. A whole world up in flames. Once I do this thing, I don't know how or why, but it's a clear picture in my head. It'll start with my gunshots. Hmm? Then across the globe, more gunshots. Simple at first. No one will think anything of it. You know, the way these things go. And then it'll turn into something else. Something we've never seen before. Really? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I do. <laughs> OK. We'll keep it our little secret. <laughs> A messenger from God giving me a chance to do something great. What else could you be? <laughs> Sent to lead me on a mission to save the world. <laughs> Just tell me when it's time for you to shine forth in all your glory. <laughs> One more to go. Before love. It's tricky with my nephew. I mean, I, I want to just stop, but he's so full of love now, I feel like everything I've done has been worth it because of him, but I don't want to do it anymore. And stop. Okay, I, I am almost done, I'm almost. It's always pushing through the resistance, the very end of things, it's the most difficult, isn't it? I don't like what I'm doing. I don't like how it feels, but I like what it's giving me. I'm just so tired of settling. What would be the opposite of settling? <laughs> Certainty. Yeah. So I was out for a walk, trying to figure out where God might be. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're asking me to do this, I'm assuming it's possible. I'm assuming so as well. Although I have no idea what you mean when you use the word God or him or whatever, but go ahead. The thing you want me to serve, this higher power thing. So I went for a walk during my lunch hour and I was sitting in this park near this stretch of shops and restaurants. And I'm sitting on a bench, there's trees, it's a lovely day, there's kids, just watching people. Parents, fathers, sons, mothers, all walking back and forth, and this guy sits down next to me. And he's just watching people too, except he's got this edge, this intensity, this sharpness to him. Well, it's supposed to what? Me, the dullness. 
the confusion I've been feeling every day for the last 15 years of my life. So he's got this grin, this guy, and he's staring at me like, like, like he, like we're in on something together. I'm looking for God, I blurt out, just like that. So close, he says. God is right at hand. You just have to accept, he says. I don't know if I believe, I say. He says, are you willing to believe? Are you willing? He's, are you willing to surrender? He says, I say no. He says, that's the problem. And then he would just stare at me. Up and down, stare me up like, like he's trying to figure out which side I'm on. Side of what? I don't know. Like the, he, I feel like I'm uh, in a spy movie and, and he's trying to figure out if I'm a double agent sent to take him down. And at that moment, I realized that this guy believes it. This guy believes. He's a believer. A true believer. Yeah. So, I'm gonna trick myself. Trick yourself? Yep. I mean, that would count, right? If I find God and I decide to follow him, whether or not there is a God, but I really believe and act on that, that would count, right? Because who's to say one way or another? Indeed. This woman came into the store a few weeks ago looking for seeds. I asked her what kind, but she didn't know. Just wanted flowers. People got flowers all wrong, man. I think they're just pretty. They're not just pretty, huh? No. No, flowers grow from what is dead. They grow from decay. They blossom to lure, to spread pollen. To keep life going. So the death can happen again and again. I think I marked her. I don't know. I mean, it's impossible to see. Impossible to see. Just like this little flower bed I made her is just the greatest thing in the world. Flower bed, huh? I doubt that's it. I told her about my dad. And I told her about what that was like, about the funeral home, my mom. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> it's like she was making me talk about this stuff by just being patient. I told her all the things that are important to me, and, and I marked her. She marked me. She did. And you did. I went to go visit the lonely lady. I just sat with her a long time. So she wouldn't be lonely for a little bit. Even if she was crazy? I don't know. Crazy might make you less lonely. Maybe not. True. I looked to the window above us, and I saw this something. I moved in the light, so I went out into the street, and I saw a face. It pulled back right away, so I ran inside and up the stairs, and it was, it was really empty, without walls in some places. Dusty. I moved quietly. I couldn't hear anything, but I kept moving. I found a lady looking scared, trying to hide. She was the woman from our flyers. You found her? She waved. I waved back. We just kind of looked at each other for a while. She said, Don't tell anyone I'm here. I said, Why'd you leave your little girl? 
she said. I'm trying to know how to accept her as she is. I pulled up a bucket and sat down. And finally I said, I won't tell anyone you're here until you're ready to come back. But if I do, you have to let me be the one to bring you back. So, so then you, you left? No, we talked for a long time. We talked about my dad. She said, people don't try to be terrible parents. They try their best. And sometimes, the best is just terrible. We talked some more, and then I left. I just left her there. So, you didn't go tell anyone where she was? That's all you had to do to get your father to come home? She said to wait. So I'll wait. She might not keep her end of the bargain. She said she wanted to know how to be a good mother. How could I stop her from that? I wanted to tell you something. All right. What? My mother. I found a way to cause her happiness. Did you make four more people cry? No, but I tried. I told her a story. Stories, really. Really? Yes. I told the story about how I met a man who sits in the back corner booth of a diner. And he said, I could have anything I wanted. Sounds like it might be a scary story. <laughs> Not the way I told it. How did you tell it? I told the story about how I went to the zoo to make a child cry, but he kicked me in the shin. And how I went to pinch a baby to make it cry, but he smiled up at me. And how I went to break the heart of a man who loved me by saying I never wanted to see him again. And he dumped me before I got the chance. I told her a dozen tales and more and more about how I tried to save the world by making people cry, and I didn't succeed. And my mother laughed <laughs> and laughed. And she took my hand and she was happy. She thinks you're the devil. <laughs> I might well be. <laughs> I got what I wanted. I hope you get what you're looking forward to. What makes you think I'm looking for anything? Why else would we come to this world? <laughs> 